All right, today we're continuing um, our discussion of magnetism by talking about something called induction. So what we're going to start off with is asking, okay, is, is stating we know that magnetic fields are caused by currents. We have a current carrying wire, it's going to produce a magnetic field. What we want to answer is, does it work the other way? Will a magnetic field Will a magnetic field cause a current? That's that's our big question. That's what we're after. So Let's take a loop of wire. The white part's coming into the page and the dark part's coming going into the page. The, dark, the white part's coming out of the page. Now let's put a magnet through this thing. Now. If the magnet is stationary, nothing happens. If we move the magnet either in or out or just move it back and forth, We get a current. And we'll look at this a little bit in class tomorrow, but what this tells us is that a changing magnetic field produces a current. As long as the magnetic field through loop of wire is changing, we're going to get a current. And the law that describes this is Faraday's law. What it says is that the induced voltage, and we'll talk about this in a second, the induced voltage, because that's what it takes to get a current, is the change in the magnetic flux over the change in time. Magnetic flux is an easy thing, and we'll talk about that. So, what really happens is we get a voltage when there's a changing magnetic field. Another important thing to note about this is that the induced current the induced current opposes the change. So, let's talk about flux. Magnetic flux is an easy concept. It's just the magnetic field times the area that the magnetic field is going through. So, let's say we have a magnetic field pointed out of the page. Just a bunch of dots heading at you. Let's say the value for that magnetic field is 2 Tesla. And let's say that we have a loop of wire in this magnetic field. And the loop of wire is 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters. The magnetic flux in this situation will be the magnetic field um, 2 Tesla times the area, which is 0.5 times 0.5 or 0.25 meters squared. So the magnetic flux in this situation uh, would be equal to 0 0.5 tesla meters squared. That's all we have to do to calculate flux. Now, <clears throat> just the magnetic field times the area. So what this tells me, if we're looking at this voltage induced thing, the induced voltage is the 
change in the flux over the change in time, which means it's the change in the magnetic field times the area over the change in time. So I can get this to happen two ways. Way one is to change change the field. That's either turn the magnetic field up or turn the magnetic field down. The other thing we can do is change the area. By shrinking um, or expanding our loop, we can get a new area which is more magnetic field. That's what flux is. The examples that we do in this with this in class are going to be pretty simple. The difficult thing about this is figuring out which direction everything's going to point in. So let's start off with a loop. Here's my loop of wire. And let's say that to begin with, we're going to have a magnetic field pointing in this direction, but it's increasing. So what that means is that my change in the magnetic field over my change in time, or my change in flux over the change in time, through that loop, is in the same direction as the magnetic field. As time goes on, I get more and more and more magnetic field through that loop. What this tells me is that the induced magnetic field is going to oppose that. That's what that little negative sign is about. That loop, the electrons in that loop, do not want the magnetic field to increase, so they're going to do something to induce a magnetic field backwards. Now, using our, um, our right-hand rule with that loop, we see that in order to do that, the current would have to run this way. The induced current is into the page at the top and out of the page at the bottom. Another way of looking at it, let's say this is our loop this time. And I have a magnetic field that's pointed out of the page, but it decreases. So I see that the magnetic field is pointing out of the page. That's a dot. I see that my change in flux, or my change, sorry that's a delta, in my magnetic field times my area over the change in time is into the page. Well the loop okay, wants to oppose that change. So the loop is going to try to make a magnetic field, the induced magnetic field, go out of the page. Well in order for that to happen using our right hand rule, if you point your right thumb out of the page towards you, your fingers curl in the direction that the current's going to go in. And when we do that, we see that the current in that loop is going to be in the counterclockwise direction. We will work more and more with this idea of direction. The thing that we need to remember is that the induced current produces a magnetic field that opposes the change in flux. That is the very important part of this.